Hi, I'm Andrew Gillis with Sapporo Mineral Systems. Today I am doing a video covering a technical paper on the gravity recovery of gold from grinding circuits. This will be a three-part series. In this first part, we'll be talking about the why of gravity concentration. So why would you install it in a circuit? Uh, what are the reasons depending on the circuit type? And in subsequent videos, we'll get into the practical uh, considerations when you're installing a gravity circuit within a milling circuit, as well as the modeling of a circuit. How do you predict what sort of gravity recovery you're going to get based on test work and some input parameters for that model. So I'm gonna get into the technical details pretty quick. If uh, you're unfamiliar with batch type or semi-batch type gravity concentrators, you can have a look at the Sepro website, uh, minerals.seprosystems.com. And here we have the Falcon SB gravity concentrator. Um, that's the model that Sepro produces or the, the brand name Falcon. But these comments will be applicable to any type of batch gravity concentrator in a grinding circuit, Nelson, Falcon, um, you know, whatever else you may be able to find out there. Uh, if you come here, lots of information on the batch concentrators, um, specifications, technical papers. So there are more basic technical papers than the one I'm going to be going through. So there are some good introductions here as well as a variety of videos describing the operation of a batch gravity concentrator and you know providing a bit more information but uh, this is the technical paper uh, that we're going to be looking at gravity recovery of gold from within grinding circuits authored by ish Graywall, mark van cleek steve McAllister, all three of them engineers steve is the founder of sepro uh, ish and mark both have experience with um, different manufacturers of gravity concentrators. So as I said, this isn't a you know, concentrator specific video. It's generally uh, generically about um, installing a gravity circuit in a milling circuit. So these, these comments are applicable no matter what make or model you may be using or contemplating. Now the, the paper is organized in a bit of a different way than I would have organized it. Uh, so we're not going to start from the start of the paper. We're going to go down here to the middle where they talk about the economic analysis of a gravity circuit, which is more about, as I said, why you would install a gravity concentrator or a gravity circuit within a milling circuit. So they start here. Um, they mention a gravity only circuit. Uh, this is, you know, not very common. Historically, gravity concentration has been one of the oldest concentration methods, but things have moved on from that. If somebody has, uh, say, an alluvial deposit where, you know, really you're not going to have a milling circuit, then gravity only is a, is a totally suitable method of recovery. Um, but in modern plants, we're talking about either uh, flotation here, uh, flotation plant plus gravity or cyanidation plant plus gravity. So let's take each of these in turn. Let's go up to the flotation plant and something of note here is that we're going to have, and this is empirically determined, Dr. Andre Laplante, 2005, for every 10% of gravity recovery in a flotation plant, generally you will improve overall plant recovery by half a percent to five percent depending on the mineralogy the operation of the plant a variety of different factors so that's certainly nothing to turn up your nose at people will spend years trying to get several more percent of global plant recovery but that's only one side of the story here so one of the benefits economically is the overall recovery and that's fairly straightforward but in a flotation plant, there are a few other considerations here. So one thing to note is this statement here. That not all of the gold recovered would have been lost to final tails. So we're also going to pick up. So let's say you have, th this is the difference between this number here. So you're going to have 10% gravity recovery, but hey, maybe only... 0.5 to 5% of additional overall recovery. 
So what's the point of putting more gold into the gravity concentrate? And is there a point? So a lot of flotation plants are going to be gold plus something else, or more accurately, something else, and then gold along with it. So in a gold copper situation, there may not be as strong of a benefit as, let's say, polymetallic. Uh, you're selling a copper concentrate. You're going to get paid really well for the gold. Um, maybe not as much of an economic incentive. But in a polymetallic concentrate, if it's going in a, say, a zinc concentrate or a lead concentrate, silver not so much, but let's say lead or zinc, um, you may not get paid at all for that gold. So, you know, some products such as zinc concentrate may pay as little as zero for gold, um, whereas copper concentrates can pay well over 90%. So there's an economic benefit here, especially in polymetallic operations, to, let's just say, reallocating or relocating the gold in a different concentrate that can be sold in a different way to get the value out of it. So... Perhaps there's a bit of a bump in overall recovery, which is great, but it doesn't necessarily do you any good if you're not getting paid for that additional gold. So having the gravity concentrate will allow you to sell it in a different way, be paid better for it, most likely, and also be paid more quickly. So, you know, there's also a knock-on benefit here of, um, you know, payment for gold in a float con can take weeks or months, depending on smelter contracts and distance and whatever. Uh, but generally, payment for gold as a gravity concentrate is much faster. You can send it to a refiner um, and get paid very quickly for that gold. So there's also a positive cash flow implication when you put it in a gravity concentrate. So there are a couple places where it could go. A uh, gravity concentrate could be installed. Um, I'm going to deal with these a bit out of order. So gold contained in a regrind circuit, this is going to be about relocation. You've already recovered it. It's at least gone through rougher flotation. So probably it's flotation recoverable. And this is just a matter of putting it somewhere else to improve the economics. Here though, in the primary milling circuit, this is a bit of a different story. So you're going to have trouble if you've got, let's just say, you know, fairly coarse free gold particles. Maybe this is a, let's say, 150 micron particle, but it's if it's in the milling circuit and it's not pulled out, probably this is going to get flattened down and may end up having, you know, a one dimension aspect um, or one, di one dimension length here of like 250 micron or something like that. Anyway, this is going to get more difficult to be picked up by flotation. So you may have a particle that's tough to recover, like a heavy gold particle that's tough to recover by flotation to begin with. Then it gets flattened, becomes even more difficult potentially to recover. And these are the sort of particles that are going to end up in the bottom of the flotation cell. And you're only going to find them when, you know, you're cleaning it out for maintenance periodically. So what a gravity concentrator will do, will take these out of the flotation circuit ahead of time and recover them into a gravity concentrate. So this is a, you know, where you can get, you know, some significant improvement in overall plant recovery is pulling out these free gold particles that will be difficult to float downstream. Yeah. I'm, I'd, I'd say this one's less of a, less of a consideration scalping gold from concentrate products. It's just like, I'd, I'd say a more extreme subset of, uh, flotation from a regrind mill. The regrind mill, there's a benefit there because the stain in the in the regrind circuit and scalping. Maybe you don't have a regrind and you're just trying to pull it out there. But that's, I'd say, this is this is not so common. Um, but these two are are certainly common, and there's strong economic incentive for both of those. So you go over here to cyanidation plus gravity. There's a bit less of a benefit here overall. So then flotation. So we're saying for every 10% of recovery, again, this is empirical, just due to plant survey, just from plant surveys, 0.2 to 1% overall gold recovery. So first off, you will get some particles um, that you might not get in flotation. Large particles, large nuggets that need a long retention time. And honestly, you know, lowering the load on the cyanidation circuit is going to improve performance. But for me, 
the largest benefit or the biggest reason here to look at gravity recovery in a cyanidation circuit is because often free gold that's going to cause the variability in feed grade. And, you know, let's say you're not even detecting some of these, but you're getting, you know, these grade spikes from free gold that you're either, you know, running into periodically, or there's lenses of free gold in the deposit, that kind of thing. You know, good luck trying to run a circuit efficiently in that sort of variable environment. Whereas a gravity circuit is going to knock down these peaks by recovering the significant large portions of free gold and lower the overall feed grade. So you're going to end up with something that looks, you know, more like this going to the cyanidation circuit. And now you're just having to optimize the circuit in a much less variable environment. So reagents are going down, residence time can go down, and you have much tighter control over the operation of that cyanidation circuit. So for me, this is the biggest economic benefit of a gravity circuit. Because in a lot of cases, you know, most of the gold you're probably going to end up putting into solution anyway. But from a process control standpoint, there's a very strong argument for adding a gravity circuit to a cyanidation plant based on the reduction of variability to the downstream process. So those are the primary reasons why you would look at a gravity circuit in a milling circuit. Look forward to the subsequent videos where I will talk about practical considerations of gravity constant installation and then get into the modeling as well and show how we predict the impact or overall effect of a gravity circuit on a milling circuit based on a number of factors. Some are ore specific and some are more um, determined empirically through operations. But we'll look at each of those factors because each of them does impact the performance of a gravity circuit and there are things that an operator can affect to improve overall gravity recovery. So thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Any follow-up questions, comments, please feel free to get a hold of us, minerals.seprosystems.com. Always happy to help.